What's up everybody and welcome back to the Cool Fears channel and welcome to day two of Dark Knight's Death Metal slash DC Week here on the Cool Figures channel and today I have for you guys the Robin King from the Dark Knight's Death Metal Dark Father Build-A-Figure Wave. But first, if you're new then welcome, this channel is all about cool action figures, analyzing them, hunting them, taking pics of them and of course playing with them. I upload new content every single day of the week so make sure you hit that bell icon because you don't know if it's going to be one video, two videos or maybe even three videos in a single day until you hit that bell icon so you stay notified. But while you're at it, if you do enjoy this video please remember to give it a thumbs up, it really helps the channel grow and if while you're at it go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It is absolutely free and I promise you in return you will get great amazing content from me in return as always the information on the channel is intended for adult collectors and not children i am your host jess the bat match girl aka the buff collector and once again guys it is day two of dark knight's death metal slash dc week here on the cool figures channel and today i have for you guys from the dark knight's death metal dark father build a figure wave the robin king this guy is is so cool guys I have to admit I have no idea who he was what he was but as I stated in yesterday's review of the Batman from this wave I'll link that video up above right here if you haven't seen it already I had no idea about this storyline I had no clue but that dark father build a figure was just too cool to pass up and I was already gonna get the Batman with the electric guitar because I love Batman and I am a guitar player so why not and uh, so I figured why not just get the wave since I wanted that dark father as well but like I stated in that video in anticipation for this week's reviews I watched a few videos actually more than one uh, on Dark Knight's death metal and this guy is actually one of my favorite characters from that story arc in fact this guy isn't even a Robin he isn't a Dick Grayson, he isn't a Tim Drake, he isn't a Jason Todd from another universe. In fact, he is a Bruce Wayne from another universe in which he is a psychopathic uh, sociopath kid um, in the Robin King's uh, universe. Uh, Bruce Wayne actually grows up to be his parents' killer um, and just to be this sadistic, dark, like I said, sociopathic kid, um, you know, that just is out just to kill and maim for his own pleasure and enjoyment. Basically, would just think of the Joker, but times that by like a hundred because this is Bruce Wayne. So, you know, he has Batman's brains and mentality and ability. So it's just multiplied by it by 10 or 20. It's just crazy. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check out comics, comic historians video on it he basically re-reads you the whole origin comic of this guy really cool uh, especially if you don't want to sit down and read the comic and he shows you the art panels as well uh, just no words uh, for copyright reasons but he re-reads it to you and in voices so that is really cool so go ahead and check him out if you haven't already and go ahead and check out comic variant on YouTube because that's where I got my information from these uh, for these characters from this wave but like I stated this guy became my favorite character from the story arc because of that because he is just such a dark version of bruce wayne and it's just so odd to me that he he became the robin king instead of a batman um but you know it, it is what it is and honestly the ending to this guy's story comic or story origin comic is very very creepy he basically just sits there um after killing alfred oh sorry spoiler alert um it's an old comic that came out so you guys should be kept up and if not i'm sorry but after killing alfred he's sitting there in this chair ringing a bell and he basically just says the time of the robin king has come or something creepy like that uh, and he starts laughing so that is just a little backstory on this guy if you haven't read that comic uh yet but like i said he definitely grew on me and became one of my favorite characters in the story arc and honestly I was not that big on his design when I first saw him but after hearing his story arc and just taking some time to have him and look at him in hand he is an amazing sculpted figure and I do have the deceased Batman and deceased Joker uh, which this guy will fit perfectly with um, so with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories this guy comes with first and foremost of course he comes with the DC stand that all the McFarlane DC multiverse figures are coming with. Of course, he comes with 
the trading card right here. I'll give you a sec. Whoop, let me strain that out. I'll give you a sec if you want to pause it. Take a look at that. And he is one of the rare McFarlane DC Multiverse figures to come with an extra set of hands. So he comes with one left fisted hand and one more gripping kind of hook pointed hand. So, which I don't really understand why because he doesn't come with any accessories to grab onto or hold onto. Um, but he comes with that extra gripping hand that looks like he should be gripping onto something. But like I said, he does not come with any other accessories. Uh, but like I stated in my previous review from yesterday as well, I have started getting into the habit of cutting out the pictures on the back of the boxes of the McFarland figures. So that way you guys can see a more blown up uh, image uh, of the card because they're basically the identical image. Um, sorry, my ring lights kind of gave me off a glare. Um, but there it is. It is a beautiful image and I'm actually keeping these to like maybe hang them up on a wall Use them as bookmarks for my comics for my graphic novels don't know too sure yet But they're really cool to have and they're you know thick cardboard because they're from the box So I highly recommend cutting those out and just throwing the box away because why the fuck not? But with that being said guys, let's go ahead and take a look at his articulation and pull him forward to take a look, closer look at him because that is all the accessories that he comes with. So taking a look closer at him, he is very nicely sculpted and I really like all the little detailing and the feathering and all this cool stuff that he has. Uh, let me take him off the stand because he does have a bit of an issue standing on his own. If you have him leaning up against something, uh, when I took the pictures, I didn't use the stand except for maybe one picture. Um, but I was finding it difficult to stand him up right here. Oh, there he goes. So he can stand, but it's kind of odd. He's on his tippy toe on this leg and he's flat footed on this one. Uh, but he, like he, but you see he, st he stands, but looking at him, he is just so, you know, like he just looks like a, a, uh, horror, you know, villain just brought to life into a comic book so it's just a really cool interpretation of Robin slash Batman in my opinion uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't like it but I am not a big boy wonder fan in general um, but so for me to say I like a Robin uh, it, it's a big deal because I like my Batman solo I like him without a sidekick I like him Robinless. Um, to me Batman is Batman not Batman and Robin I mean Batman and Robin was cool when I was growing up as a kid because what kid doesn't want to be Batman sidekick so you know you kind of think oh maybe one day I could be Robin but screw that no I want to be Batman <laughs> so anyways guys taking a look at his articulation he can look all the way to the right and all the way to the left despite all this stuff right here the neckline actually clears up which is really nice because like, I, like you can see, he can turn all the way to the right and all the way to the left. This little chain mill uh, headgear that he's wearing is a very soft pliable plastic so it can move out of the way. This crown he's wearing is soft and pliable as you can see as well. Um, he can look down that much. Whoops, he can look up that far. All right, so the Robin King got his head back. So as you guys saw there, uh, he can't really look up too far without his head popping off. Uh, due to all this stuff in the back as well as the chainmail hat that he's wearing uh, but as far as his arm articulation it can go all the way up he does get shoulder rotation that far because of that and that far back because of that you do get bicep swivel right there you do get a single hinge elbow joint which goes all the way though so it's really nice because you don't need that double feature you just need that one you do get rotation at the wrist as well as up and down in and out if you twist it around you do get rotation at the waist but you have to hold the legs because it's all one piece right here so you just have to hold the legs and you do get rotation right there talking about the legs they do tend to uh pop out so just be aware of that if you stretch them out too far but you can just snap them right back in so as you can see he goes out that far he kicks out move my arm kick out that far forward he can't really oh yeah he can kick back that far he has single hinge, wait, is it single hinge? Yeah, it's a single hinge knee, so he goes up to 90. Uh, you do get rotation at the knee right there, so uh, so you can see it rotates right there. Um, looking at his ankle articulation, it goes down that far, it goes up that far, 
and you get the ball rocker and of course the toe articulation. If you happen to watch my review of the Batman from yesterday, I do happen to forget the toe articulation. But of course, it's a McFarlane figure, so of course it has toe, artic toe articulation. So with that being said, guys, like I said, this guy is actually one of my favorite figures from this line. Um, it's a tie between him, the Dark Father, build a figure, and of course, the Batman with the electric guitar. Um, and I was not expecting him to be, you know, uh, one of those, uh, or one of my favorites from this wave. In fact, I thought I was going to have to throw him in the drawer with figures that I bought that were part of two packs where I wanted one figure, or I just wanted the accessories. But instead, he's actually going to be proudly displayed and um, proudly shown because he is just actually such a really cool figure. Uh, so with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at some cool pics I took of him, and we'll be right back. Alright guys, thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed those pics, you can find the full images over on Instagram at CoolFigures. And I did recently start a separate account for more of my single, more thought out, planned out, more edited shots called Epic Shots by Cool Figures. So go ahead and check that out as well. But as you can see, this guy is so poseable, so dynamic, so cool, so creepy as well. So he'll fit in perfectly with my deceased figures. But with that being said, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, guys. But whether or not you're a subscriber, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to listen to me talk about toys. And make sure you check back tomorrow for day three of Dark Knight's Death Metal slash DC Week here on the Cool Figures channel, where we will be looking at Superman from the Dark Knight's Death Metal Dark Father Build a Figure Wave. As always, I'm your host, Jess of the Bat Magic Girl, aka the Buff Collector, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.